Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Random Action. Welcome to my latest top 10 list. Actually, today we'll be doing a special double length top 10 list, or I guess as a normal person might call it, a top 20 list. In this video, I'll specifically be looking at my favorite theme songs from 1980s cartoons. This ranking is absolutely based on my personal preferences, and not on any criteria other than my own enjoyment. I actually have a handful of variations on this same topic where we can look at a wider variety of 80s themes from a few different perspectives, but those are videos for a later date. For now though, let's take a look at my 20 favorite themes and see how many of them all of you out there can't stand. Feel free to share your own top 10 or 20 in the comments, as I thoroughly expect no two people are going to possibly have the exact same lineups. As a slight change in my usual format, I want to throw in a couple of honorable mentions right here at the front of the list. That's because they're not original songs, so they're not so much cartoon themes as songs repurposed from other media. I'm sure these won't be coming as any real surprise to anyone, but they're the themes used for the real Ghostbusters and the one used for the 1988 Ruby Spears Superman. There are several others that could go in this spot that came out of the previous decades, like those from the various versions of Scooby, Yogi, and the Flintstones that popped up in the 80s as well. Things that fall into that category aren't going to be on this list though, and neither are any themes that were buried under a ton of narration or exposition. I don't need to know the origin of the characters in any show I'm watching in every single episode, and because doing so clutters up the music, it just doesn't work for me. Anyway, moving right along. Starting us off, I've picked the theme to the animated Beetlejuice series from 1989. I put this one down in the number 20 spot because it almost violates the rules I just established, but skirts by enough to be unique in my opinion. It's essentially a remix of the regular theme from the movie, with less bells and choral aspects to it. Instead, for the show, they mixed in audio cues from the cartoon and ended up with something that invokes the feeling of riding a roller coaster through a haunted mansion. It just generally brings with it a feeling of fun. Moving on, I have another that skirts the second of my previous rules with 1987's Dino Saucers, but I let it slip by because the music mostly builds to a normal volume throughout the narration, limiting itself to basic 16th note drum rhythm for the majority of it. When the narration stops, we're left with a driving beat and some hard synth things that I just really enjoy. This next one falls into a similar scenario as Dino Saucers, being that it starts with narration for a bit, but it's from 1986's Adventures of the Galaxy Rangers. The narration for this song occurs over music that sounds like a take on Kenny Loggins' Danger Zone, and the vocals come in just as the narrator trails off. What we end up with is a pretty decent hair metal song, and I'm always a sucker for a good hair metal song. Plus, that No Guts, No Glory hook is just awesome. Here at number 17, I went with the theme to the 1981 Spider-Man cartoon. There's just something about it that's cool. Maybe it's the distorted guitar or all the funk that bassline gives it. The theme is modern enough to avoid feeling like disco, but retro enough to not be 80s rock. It fits so well right where it's at here at the turn of the decade, and matches its contemporaries from primetime series of the era in particular. I'd almost say it defies any genre other than TV jingle, but it serves its purpose pretty well. So Spider-Man was an example of me sticking more closely to my rules, and I'm going to keep that up for the rest of the list, with this next entry being from Mr. T. This 1983 series had a fully orchestral opening number that starts with the timpani roll of all things. That's pretty classy. Not only that, but it did an excellent job of invoking late 70s and early 80s police and detective dramas, making it somewhat more mature than the cartoon it was introducing. I'm really just putting this one here because I like the musicality in it, and it would fit in as good chase music in any 1980s action movie. <laughs> Next. 
Next up, I picked the intro from 1989's Karate Kid animated series. I enjoy the sound of most traditional Asian instruments, like those that start this tune off. I would have preferred they stuck around through the entire song though, and if they had, I probably would have placed it higher. But that synth track that runs through it still invokes something of an Asian feel. It's a nice rock beat supplemented by those more regional fills, and overall, an enjoyable song. Staying in 1989, though barely, since the show came out in late December of that year, we have Dragon Warrior, the legend of the hero Abel. I've always enjoyed a good dramatic fanfare, and this show had one that did a great job of invoking the feel of a boss fight in the games. It also had an interesting key change in the middle that indicated more emotion to the series than just non-stop action. The only reason I put it this low was because it felt almost too much as though it came out of the games, and didn't always fit the pace or tone of the show it was attached to. Then still in 1989, we've got the Super Mario Bros. Super Show, which had a rap theme that faithfully sampled the music from the actual video game. The reason that this was different than what Dragon Warrior did is it introduced several measures of lyrics between each loop of the game theme that told the Mario Bros. story in pretty succinct and faithful detail. These lyrics were also backed by a solid beat that fit seamlessly with the original 8-bit theme as well. Best of all though, it was introduced by Captain Lou Albano addressing the viewers directly. Hey, paisanos, it's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! Of course, we all know there was better music from this very show, and don't worry, I'll mention it in a little bit. This next one, also from 1989, though I promise we'll be moving on soon, is one I may be the only person in the world that would put on a list like this. It's the theme from Camp Candy, the adventure comedy starring 80s icon John Candy as the head of a summer camp. So regarding the song itself, there's really not a whole lot to it. It's organ grinder circus music over a set of off-key lyrics. Honestly though, for me, that's the majority of the charm. Just the go-for-it approach of John singing the theme himself, and the way it's mainly just a list of items he's going through make it a catchy bop, and pretty endearing to me. It also has a tinge of early Weird Al to it, which is always bonus points in my book. Let's go way back to nearly the beginning of the decade and talk about the theme to the 1982 Hulk animated series. Oh hey, it's another timpani. In this song though, that beat drives the tempo of the music and it almost takes on the sound and feel of a dirge. In fact, it always seems to remind me of the Imperial March from Star Wars in some ways. It invokes the raw destruction that follows the Hulk wherever he goes, but even better, it crescendos at the end to something far more triumphant and powerful, reminding us all that under the monster, the Hulk truly is a hero. As we enter into the top 10, you'll probably see several series you were expecting, but there will probably be several omissions that you weren't expecting as well. Here in the 10 spot, I've decided to put the theme from 1986's Silverhawks. This song is a perfect example of an area-appropriate rock song, up to and including a lengthy guitar solo smack in the middle. It's a good solo too, like something you'd have found in a Yes or Journey album. Of all the songs on this list, it may be the one that most appropriately fits the mid-80s, and for that it gets my seal of approval. Jumping forward a couple of years, I have the theme to the series Cops from 1988. This one does start with narration by Bulletproof over a 30s crime noir beat, 
but that narration ends right as the theme itself fades in. Not only does the song from that point forward have a pretty great fanfare in several different keys throughout its runtime, but it's underscored with a great driving beat that's super reminiscent of the theme to Airwolf. It probably goes without saying, since you all know my obsession with aircraft at this point, but anything that makes me think of Airwolf is a total win. Plus, that hero shot at the end of the theme, just magnificent. Next is one I'm sure you've all been waiting for, as it's the theme from Transformers. However, it's not the 1984 original, but instead the second season theme from 1985. I prefer this one so much more than the season 1 music, and it's what pops into my head when I think Transformers. The increased tempo, the lower, less choral vocals, and their staccato delivery, and the more, in my opinion, robotic and technical feel of the song are what make it better than the original and more appropriate to the series overall. <laughs> Here in the number 7 slot, I'm going with Starcom from 1987. I absolutely love that it starts with the scramble of the full Starcom fleet and combines the heroic sense of adventure with the sense of urgency that the intro conveys visually. But then, halfway through, it flips and turns into the villain theme, displaying the overwhelming force of the enemy that Starcom is confronting before shifting back to the heroic anthem for a climactic space battle. It tells a full story over its one minute runtime, and does so without any lyrics at all, from the sirens in the beginning to the explosions at the end. to admit something that I doubt will surprise anyone. I love 80s sword and sorcery media. From schlocky barbarian B-movies to D&D to games like Altered Beast, it's all good in my book. Ever since seeing Death Stalker 2 at way too early an age while sleeping over at a friend's house, I've been hooked. That's why my number 7 pick goes to the 1985 series Galtar and the Golden Lance. I remember watching Beastmaster every time it was on WPIX Channel 11 out of New York, which was a lot since they reran movies endlessly, and never getting tired of it. Were most of the movies in this vein MST3K fodder? Sure. Were they cheesy, poorly acted, and cheaply made? Undoubtedly. But they had a feel and sound to them that was something special, uniquely combining those Dark Age settings with an 80s coat of paint. The theme to Galtar does that same thing for me, and that's why I put it in this spot. anthem that belongs in any best of the 80s four volume collection you order from a commercial during the Price is Right. Sure, Jason the Wheeled Warriors from 1985 starts out with some light narration, but it's all done over a Casio sampler beat that explodes into the song as soon as the narrator ends. This is a power anthem that wouldn't have felt at all out of place blasting from the speakers of my local skating rink right after a Starship or a Foreigner song. The best part is that the song fits the show by incorporating elements of it into the lyrics. Sure, it doesn't exactly tell a story as much as it does a potpourri of plot points, but they're definitely there. The closing song of Keep On Rolling is a banger too, so I feel comfortable putting this one up this high. This next song encapsulates the area far better than almost everything else I could have chosen for this list, and as such, holds kind of a special place for me. The theme of 1984's Kid Video is a perfect time capsule tune as well as being attached to a series that was wish fulfillment for every kid out there. It's 80's mall rock at peak power, with electronic drums, wailing guitars, and synthesizers underscoring the entire thing. Plus, that happy-go-lucky title sequence of the kids being reckless and having fun heading to their practice session was a great representation of how young people in the 80s felt and acted. 
So that one goes here as a great example of an audio time machine. It's giving me rockin', it's giving me moving, oh, 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 From my video to my radio. My next pick is from the biggest cartoon remaining on the list, which is a hint for those of you trying to guess numbers 1 and 2. It's the theme from the 1986 series Thundercats, which I'm guessing everyone watching this can recognize just by the initial herald call. It starts out with a couple measures of drum and bass setting the tempo for the song before making that great hi-hat transition to the core. lyrics tell you nothing at all about the plot or characters other than the fact they're a bunch of badasses and those scales that accompany the thunder, thunder, thundercats do an excellent job of hyping the song up even more. Combined with the fact that the song seems to end in the middle before coming back in for the villain introduction sans lyrics, indicating the clear demarcation between the two sides, and you've got a Stone Cold classic. Thunder, 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 This next pick probably won't come as much of a shock for many viewers of this channel because most of you probably think I'm quite the shill for this show, but it's the theme to 1985's Robotech. It's such a great victory march that you can't help but feel a little pumped up as it moves along. It's also the perfect match for the carrier launch that the show kicks off with, and the street level battle with the Zentradi that follows. There's just something about it that speaks to the triumph of the human spirit, and prepares you for the conflict, drama, and action to come. Those first few episodes of the series may have been a little slow, but launching into battle with Rick right at the beginning made you want nothing more than to get to that point in the actual series. It's a great choice for the theme of one of my favorite cartoons of all time. Alright, ready for number one? Did you make your guesses? If you did, I'm almost positive that you didn't get it right. It's the theme to a pup named Scooby-Doo from 1988. Did anyone at all see that one coming? Not only is a pup named Scooby-Doo arguably my favorite incarnation of the character, but this theme song does an amazing job at tying the new designs and modernizations in the series to its roots back in the 1960s, just with the faster pace of the more modern era. I'm also definitely down for a good, fast-tempo, jazzy doo-wop kind of tune, with some harmonic backup singers and a slightly raspy lead vocalist straight out of a smoky bar lounge. Then you have the fact that the song lyrically sums up the show without the use of exposition, and tells you everything you need to know about the series ahead. The song's super catchy and musically well implemented, and that's why I put it here in my first place. You can help us solve the crimes with Scooby! Of course, it's not a theme, but one of the best pieces of music to come out of 80s cartoons was Captain Lou's rendition of Do the Mario, and it deserves a special mention here. Do the Mario, swing your arms from side to side, come on, it's time to go, do the Mario, take... But there you go, a full 20 of my favorite 80s cartoon theme songs and a little justification about why I chose each. That's the funny thing about music, though, there's no justification required. My criteria for picking songs generally boils down to, it sounds good to me, it conveys an energy to me, and it makes me feel something. If those criteria are satisfied, then nothing else matters, which is the title of another great song. There you go though, have at it in the comments and tell me what you think, what you do and don't agree with, and what your own personal favorites are. Next up will be a new deep dive or a personnel office in the next couple days as I work my way toward the animated 90s and film. Don't forget to check out the streams if you're interested in board game goodness, my 80s and 90s designs on Etsy, as I'll be adding more to those soon, the Discord, where you can talk about any and all things pop culture that are on your mind, and my book, if you're looking for something to read. Links for all those things are down in the video description. As always, thanks for watching everyone. Stay tuned and stay tuned, as in cartoons. Later.